welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be looking at the topic of true love. This is something that everybody wants to have in their lifetime. And believe it or not, a Vedic astrology chart can definitely show you the likelihood uh, of whether this will happen for you. In contemplating this topic, and it is very big, um, I started studying one of the yogas of true love and I'm just going to map that out for you. So we'll call this true love yoga. And I'm seeing this as you want an exchange between the lords of the fifth house of romance, creativity, all that wonderful stuff. You also want an exchange between, so the two lords here, this is what you want, an exchange between these two lords. Now, if you've got an exchange between this lord as well, the first house lord, that's fantastic. That's the trifecta. Amazing. If you've got that, well done. Congratulations. You very, you know, true love is quite uh, certain to come your way. If Saturn's involved, probably not going to come um, your way until age, say, for example, after 36, it's more likely. Um, and if Rahu's involved, may not activate for you or happen um, until Rahu matures. So we're looking at the age of 42. All right, so perhaps at that time, um, that kind of thing may activate. These, these things can take time. Um, there are a couple of charts, celebrity charts, that we can have a look at here. I'll bring them up on my screen. I don't know if I'll be bringing them up there, but I'll talk you through. <clears throat> so we've got, um, I've got two. I've got Michael J. Fox and Christopher Reeve, right? Both men had extremely devoted and very loving partners and, and and I saw a little interview of Michael J Fox just recently and he was saying that you know he's just more and more and more in love with his wife every day it just keeps growing and growing and growing now how is that happening well he's got um, the two lords he's got moon and Venus conjunct here in in the fourth beautiful right well, I mean that's just Wow, that's, that's really something lovely. Um, and Moon and Venus, even if they're not lords of those two houses, I've heard that that is quite a very loving combination. Um, of course, I mean, that's a beautiful combination. So he doesn't have, uh, well, all right, he's got aspect from Saturn. So that's very, very good. Okay, yep, he's got Saturn aspect on that. So, I mean, he's got the trifecta, um, well, Saturn aspect on the seventh house. But it's very good, right? So Michael J. Fox is a good chart to study for that one. And then the other chart that I had a look at was Christopher Reeve. Um, again, I didn't do a huge amount of research, but I did see something. I read something quickly yesterday, and it was about the fact that I think, yeah, he had a, an extremely devoted wife, and I think when he died, um, I think she died shortly afterwards. It was one of those things where, you know, they had they had to be together kind of thing. Now he's got a relationship between the fifth lord and the seventh lord through aspect. So Mars is in his own house of Scorpio here, and Saturn's throwing his third aspect uh, onto the fifth house here. So it's a beautiful yoga, this, right? Amazing. If you have it, wonderful. You know, it's, it, you are very, very likely um, to find true love this time around or have it find you. Now, as I was contemplating this beautiful planetary combination, I started thinking about the houses. And I started thinking about, all right, well, who is here housewise, right? Regardless of what you've got going on sign-wise and how that setup is for you, what are, what are the main houses that we're dealing with here? 
we've got the Sun who lives here and we have Venus as the Lord of this house but I'm not going to draw Venus here for this episode I'm going to draw Saturn here because Saturn this is his exaltation place this is where he performs the best right and this is Saturn and Sun I often think they're a wonderful um, they're actually a wonderful business combination I, I see it in that way and I've seen it in the charts of people I, I think this is a terrific um, business type com thing combination um, I probably should have drawn those the other way around let's have this you know zero to 100 that's one of the ways I, I look at that combination uh, it, it's a terrific combination now this is the house of marriage it's also the house of business and what happens in businesses well they they they're mergers right and look at that the word marriage and the word merger I'm sure if I did a bit of research there would be some kind of incredible um, connection between these two words and our marriage is a merger and it was that way in the past it was you know two people coming together two people bringing their assets together um, two families coming together two lines of ancestry coming together there's a lot that happens here so that's all pretty amazing stuff going on there let's take a look at this concept of minimums and maximums and the reason that I'm drawing out Sun and Saturn here is because that's where this concept today's concept is coming from I wanted to explore the maximums of love the Sun and I wanted to explore the minimums of love Saturn right and we'll see how both of these planets um, are two of the greatest lovers in the planetary system and now you, you must be surprised Saturn a great lover is it possible well let's take a look stay with me it's gonna get interesting we're gonna take a look at the Sun first and then we're gonna have a look at Saturn and we're gonna see how does Saturn love a person can Saturn love a person is it possible yes it is it's very possible you'll discover it's very good all right you want both ideally if you can if you can have both so let's take a look at the maximums and regardless of if you have this yoga or not some people might say oh well, I don't have that yoga does that mean I'll never have true love well, of course you'll have true love just no you will think about it and you know have it in your mind visualize it read books about it I don't know listen to music it's all out there and it's all you can create what you want right I was listening to Caroline Mace uh, yesterday there's a new lecture that she's done and it was really beautiful she has a definition for miracles and she said that a miracle is God bending the laws of the universe just for you and I thought that is absolutely beautiful so you know and this is why I do talk about going beyond astrology um, I do talk about going beyond a framework look and this is a divine language it's a beautiful framework through which we can access the divine through which we can um, start to understand things that our rational minds are not capable of understanding we need a language don't we we need a framework and this is a beautiful one to use this is my favorite one to use of all the things I've explored and discovered um, but it's not uh, it's not the end point okay and that's what I do want to keep reinforcing to people that yes this is very good but let's not get attached to this and let's not get lost in here either okay now maximums what are we dealing with we are dealing with the Sun who doesn't love the Sun I love the Sun uh, and what have we got here we've got words like infinity we've got words like I'm gonna put absolute 
and love. I tend to think these three go together very nicely. I've also got the words soul forever and always. Now, why am I bringing up this collection of words? It's to describe the sun. It's to describe light. Okay, and these are, yes, light should feature here definitely. Um, well, I should put it here. But you think about it, a ray of light, can it be? Well, yeah, I suppose it can be. But you see limits. And that's where we come to Saturn, isn't it? Limits. We'll get to Saturn. But really, technically, this just goes on and on and on, doesn't it? It just it goes on and on and on. I mean, we receive the light of the stars. Um, sometimes it takes time to receive that light. We've got the soul here, forever and always. These are also, we're looking at that infinity. We're looking at that on and on and on and on and on type thing. That's what we really want to look at here. And these are the feelings that come up. You know, these are the feelings of the fifth house. Of romance, children. I have notes today. <laughs> children. Creativity. I hope my hair isn't going to mess up the audio that last time. Uh, children, creativity. And expression. And art is that thing where you express a feeling and it, it, it goes out, right? It, it, you express. Expression is everything in, in this house. Um, what else do we have here? Yes, this is the royalty of the chart. This is the best stuff of the chart, the sun and the moon. Right, and I'm going to highlight these houses here because to me, this is the heart, right? This is the heart that loves. And the heart that loves knows no reason. There's no reason, right? If you, if you love somebody, you can't pick a reason. You can't say um, that, oh, you know, it's because of your job or because of what you look like or because of how much money you have or um, because of your shoes or, you know, because of... And even how someone thinks or something like that, I mean, even that, right? Like, it, because thoughts, again, are, but that's at least internal. So that's something that's, you know, that's going deeper at least. But I mean... Love knows no reason, right? And look at that. There's no Mercury here, is there? Where's Mercury? Mercury's not here. No, no, Mercury doesn't get involved, right? There's no thinking. There's no logic. There's no and Mercury, reason, logic, thinking, communication. That's a different realm. That's different. This is feelings and this is soul. And it's the royalty of the chart. This is the best stuff of life this is it this is what this is what people want this is what um so you know when it comes to expression what's coming out of here and especially here this fifth house you know that's music art hollywood most of our expression glamorizes this and wants this most of our expression is about pining for this, wanting this, longing for this. Oh, everybody loves this. Yes. Okay. The other note I have here is that your public, the word, the word public came up, your public will judge you, right? Now you see there's a connection, the lines. So we're going to come up here. Your public here, the 11th house. Your people, your public, are going to judge you for your relationship and that happens and that's a uh, I've heard that Aquarius is the sign that um, if they 
get judged about relationship because they're the rebel they want to be in that relationship even more so I have definitely heard that and I think that's very true um, but your public will judge you and that's not nice sometimes sometimes it's good but there's a lot of um, and forget we're not talking about royalty here we're talking about you and your actual life some of your friends will be like oh I don't like him for you you know he's not um, I don't know he's not XYZ enough right there's a lot of that that goes on and people will approve as well it's not like people won't but there there is a lot of that to come here in relation to, to the maximums uh, courage what's needed courage courage this is the thing that's needed okay in order to have any of this in order to um, experience the beauty of this house well you'll need courage now courage and i looked this up there how are we going for time oh 16 minutes this is terrible i have a lot of co content to cover uh i'm going too slowly but i will read you this little bit that i found oh i've got rid of it let me um google search that again so the french word for heart For heart is core, so it's spelt here C O E U R. And I had a page up here um, that explained that that is actually, I think it's the Latin root of the word courage. So that is definitely, definitely the thing that you need in this territory here. But why have I said the word maximums? The reason I've said the word maximums is because these are the qualities of the sun. The sun is Leo. The sun is um, champagne. The sun is, we, we stay up all night. The sun is, uh, let's quit our jobs and spend the entire summer somewhere wonderful. There's an extravagance. There's a, there's a maximumness. You know, um, there's no stinginess here. And actually, this is really interesting because I did get an email from one of my regular clients. And I, I did say to her, I might be talking about this subject. I don't know, but she, she was asking about um, the, the concept of stinginess in, in relation to love. And no, you will not find the word stingy anywhere here. No, absolutely not. We'll come to it. We're, <laughs> we're just about to go to the minimums, but um, which you need. You need the minimums as well. You need both. But there's no concept of that here. This is the maximums of love, and this is the sun, right? And as I say, this is this is romance, music, art, extravagance. In an, nothing is too much for you. All that beautiful, wonderful stuff right dreamy go for it go for it we are running out of time so i am going to scoot on to my favorite planet of all time <laughs> which is the very unglamorous saturn we're going to look at the minimums now <laughs> we've just had a nice time in the maximums we've just been drinking champagne and watching a sunset and of course you know tomorrow never comes and all that kind of thing so Let's get out of there now and we're going to go <laughs> somewhere very different but necessary and good. And you will see, you will see that you need both. And you see because this is true love that I'm describing. It's not just the maximums, it's the minimum as well. Okay, and you're going to see that you want this. You're going to see that, that Saturnian lovers are also, um, you know, need, need celebration. Come on. Saturn needs a good PR person. That's what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> Minimums. And I'm just having a chat. I know it kind of looks like I'm teaching something here, but this isn't, I'm not teaching. There are professional teachers. Please watch them. I, you know, I'm just having a chat. We're just having fun. We're hanging out. Um, this is my way of, 
of just try to get ideas. I want to share them. It's, it's just that. Right, let's take a look at the minimums. Now, who have we got here? We've got Saturn, my favorite. <laughs> Saturn, Saturn, Saturn. I'm drawing him in three times. Just gonna make sure my hair doesn't mess up the audio. Okay, Saturn. Here in the seventh house, because he's exalted here. I'm not, this is not a story of um, Venus and Mars. Though they are the, the players, they are the planets of love, sure. I mean, yes. But to me, I think if, and we'll, you'll see in the next bit that I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to explain why I'm talking about the minimums and maximums. So what are the minimums? All right, now this is probably going to cut out. We're at 21 minutes. Doesn't matter. What do I have here? I've got the word breathing. It's an unusual word, isn't it? But it's true. This is the house of I want you breathing, right? So we've just left Champagne and Endless Summers, and we've come here to... Well, actually, that Stevie Wonder song that I mentioned in yesterday's, or whenever I did it, the Bad Rap 2 video, Please Don't Go, um, Please Don't Go, Please Keep Breathing, right? This is the minimum. And this is kind of interesting. I'm, I'm going to put the word funeral as well. Odd choice, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain. I was thinking about the life of Karl Lagerfeld. And what an amazing man he was when it came to love. He had one true love and, you know, his, his partner was someone that he stuck by right to the very, very end. And I had read somewhere that he um, slept in a cot by his side in the hospital, I think, for a really long time. Um, as he was, you know, about to make his transition. So the commitment, the devotion, the simple concept of I want you breathing, you know, you could be in a coma, but I'll be there. I'll, I'll, I'll get a little cot and I'll be in the hospital too, um, is an extraordinary kind of love, isn't it? And it's the one that's not talked about. It's the one that's not glamorized by Hollywood films. It's the not, not the one that everyone aspires to. Yet it's so important, right? It, it doesn't get enough attention. And unfortunately, you know, this camera is about to cut just as I'm talking about it. How annoying. Even on my video, I can't give it proper. I probably should have started with the minimums, but I started with the maximums because I thought, well, because that's really what people want. See, you hardcore people who are sticking with me right now, tell you what, you know about the minimums. I bet a load of people have dropped off by now. But anyway, funeral. Now I'm just wondering, do I start this because it's going to cut out? I'll start it. I'll, I'll, we'll pick up again. So funeral, why did I put this word? This again is in relation to the life of Karl Lagerfeld, who um, when he died, I think he wanted his ashes mixed in with the ashes of his lover. Um, how, how beautiful is that, you know, as a, as a ceremonial um, goodbye, right? Um, the minimums. Hi everyone, apologies, got cut out again. And then what happened was I wrote some stuff on my whiteboard, but my microphone wasn't plugged in. So now I think I'm all plugged in, it's all good. So there is some extra writing on the whiteboard which I will talk through again. So where did I leave you? I think I, we got up to funeral and I'll talk you through these words in a moment. Funeral, and I think I mentioned that Karl Lagerfeld wanted his um, ashes mixed in with those of his lover and, and what a, a beautiful, um, you know, ceremony that was. And, and, and he was very much a man, sat in sun. I'm gonna put sun here as well. Sun is um, exalted here. And, and Karl Lagerfeld's life was, was very Saturn Sun. 
uh, you look at the life and, and that's what he was. He was about expression, that was his art, the sun, and um, of course his life was that of hard work and, um, and commitment and the grind, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of hard work to create what he built, really amazing. I've written the word institution as another important word here minimum it's like a, the minimum agreement institution there's also you could use the word structure again very saturnian word um the word vow it also links in so that thing of you know i want you breathing as a minimum right vow i vow to be there in sickness and in health it's like you need an agreement or some forethought or thinking ahead or apologies I hope my um, my Mac sound is not coming onto the camera here can you hear that it's very noisy uh, where was I vows yeah it's like we need an agreement we need a structure we need a commitment we need something because who's going to stick around when times are really tough um, and that's, that's a really important word here. The word breaks is a great word for Saturn and, and the concept of the minimums. Breaks, you think about it, you think about a relationship that is, well firstly, what is a relationship from a spiritual point of view? Now one of the things that people say is that this, the relationship is a vehicle that will offer you the fastest spiritual growth. Right? It will test you, it will challenge you, it will push your buttons, it will do all kinds of things. You're probably not going to like most of it, um, but commitment, the minimums, it will, will keep you. You will, you will stay and you'll work through. And, and the other thing is breaks. So if a relationship is a vehicle that offers um, spiritual growth, what do you want on a vehicle? What do you want on your car? And I was thinking about that this morning. I was thinking, well, I definitely want brakes in my car. You know, if I'm going to be driving anywhere, I would like a car that has brakes. Same deal with a bicycle. I have a bicycle and I love it because it has brakes on it. I don't think I'd ride it otherwise. And I was thinking this morning about what if you lived in San Francisco and you have a car that has no brakes? I mean, that's got to be the scariest thing ever. And yes, there would be many car crashes and it would be awful. And in brackets here, I've got the word Mars. Mars, Mars is the go, go, go. And Saturn is the brakes, right? And in a relationship, you definitely want someone who's got some good brake energy. Very important. Someone to say, whoa, let's slow down, you know, let's take time or you know, whatever it is. Very important thing. Um, I've got some notes here saying that people say that Saturn doesn't love or whatever that is. Oh, the battery's low on my phone. I'm getting distracted now. See, terrible that that got cut. Anyway, people say that Saturn doesn't love. No, Saturn absolutely loves. Saturn really loves. Saturn loves when the times are tough. Um, Saturn is there. Saturn loves, you know, or if you have a Saturnian lover, this is the person who will really be with you when it counts. Um, there's nothing too glamorous going on here. And you think about that in sickness and in health thing, you know, that when you're vomiting, you know, that person is holding your hair back kind of thing, right? It's that. It, it's, it's, it's the person who's there for you, who loves you anyway, and is in it for the long haul, is in it through the tough stuff, doesn't get put off. Um, doesn't get scared easily. There's so many great virtues here, so many great, wonderful, beautiful things that Saturn can offer. You know, um, it's really wonderful. The reason I put um, Saturn here and here as well is because, of course, we've got purpose, and that is something that I would say, as a minimum, you do want um, in a partner. You do want someone who has a sense of purpose in their lives. A relationship will be very difficult without, um, you know, and you don't want to make the relationship your purpose. You want 
um, each person must have their purpose, right? And be working on that or, or towards that. And that's, that's a good minimum. The other thing I highlighted was this house here as well, which is the 11th house of hopes, dreams and wishes. And again, to me, there's a, there's a minimum quality here. It's really interesting with this house. A lot of people think um, hopes, dreams and wishes you get the best of everything. I mean, I've done it. I kind of do that in my transit videos a little bit. When, when something's going through the 11th house, I'm like, well, hey, you know, yeah, you win the lottery. You'll, you'll meet someone. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's here. But when we're looking at minimums, which Saturn will ask you to do, the majority of hopes, dreams and wishes on the planet are for things like, I hope I get enough food. Um, the majority of hopes, dreams and wishes are for things like um, I run a small business. God, I, I hope I can pay myself next month. That's the majority of um, hopes, dreams and wishes. And, you know, in a relationship, these things all get looked at, right? The minimums and maximums get worked out. Now, I'm going to bring this all together and show you how this works. So I've got my next slide up here. So I'm going to draw this on. Sorry, I got a bit distracted just then by my phone. I'm going to turn it upside down. That's what happens when the video gets cut sometimes because then I have to like transfer the files and I lose my train of thought and it's the end of a long day. I've been really busy as well, doing lots of stuff and doing readings, which is so much fun. So keep it coming guys. I really love doing this work. Um, and I'm going to be setting up a scheduling program hopefully soon. Um, and now that I'm saying it on the video, I'm really committing to this for my website so that coaching calls will be a lot easier to, um, to set up. Got to make that process easier. Okay. Win-win. Let's take a look here. We've got the sun here. My max, your min. Win-win. Seventh house is the ultimate house of win-win. That's really what you're looking for. You're looking for win-win. Um, and we know what a win-win looks like in business, a win-win deal, all that kind of thing. So that's all very obvious. But what does it look like in a relationship? My max your minimum my minimum your maximum so i've got the note here my maximum your minimum my minimum your maximum with question marks so what what is this what is this concept that i'm trying to um illustrate here so i'll illustrate this with a story some time ago in Australia, my friends took me, I went with a group of friends on a beautiful wine tour of the Hunter Valley. If you're ever in Australia, please visit the Hunter Valley. It's stunning. It's a really, really beautiful part of Australia. And we went there, they had a little minivan taking us all around, trying different wines. And at lunchtime, we sat at a giant table and all of us were socializing and, and having a lovely time. And I happened to be sitting next to a guy who flew in from France just to be uh, on that tour. It was really amazing. And he ran, I think he owned and ran a vineyard in France somewhere. And as we're sitting there and, you know, they're about to serve the meal, um, he picked up the fork and he had something to say about the fork. He really didn't like it. There was, there was a huge problem. I can't even remember what the problem was, right? But he had a real problem with this fork. And he, he spoke about it. And I said this comment. I said to him, um, oh, I said, oh, you expect the best. And in his wonderful French accent, he said, no, no, I expect the minimum. And that was a moment in time for me because I realized that, wow, my best is his minimum. And that is what this looks like in, in this relationship house. You know, you've got the maximum. 
and you've got a person's minimums. And ideally, this is known. And I think when you've got, say, for example, a true love yoga, you've got the exchange between these two houses functioning really well. This will all be known and understood. And you'll just have this nice ability to play in the space and it'll work. You know your maximums, you know your minimums, you know the score, you know what this thing is going to be, you know largely you know, there's enough um, vision, you can see ahead, you've got and there's longevity here, you can, you can see this for a while and you have a lovely space um, in which the two of you can play. And that's really why I wanted to draw out the minimums and the maximums um, of these of these two houses and what's possible here. And, you know, I think that's all I've got on the slides here. I mean, win-win, I did jot that down. That is the ultimate. And I mean, there's a beautiful quote, one of my favorite quotes uh, on love that I've ever seen is by Mira Sayal. And she says, I've got it up here somewhere. Well, do I have it? No, I don't. And I have been reading the book of Mirdad as well, and beautiful quotes um, about love there, but I didn't end up even getting touching any of that. So that's really interesting because I was going to um, bring some of that content up. But anyway, this Mira Sayal quote is absolutely beautiful. And to me, it really sums up the true aim of, of what you want from this house and what you want is a win-win situation right? The seventh house. Um, and Mira Sayal sums it up here by saying maybe that's what love meant. Both people thinking they were the lucky one. And imagine that. Imagine the situation where each of you thinks, my God, I'm so lucky. And, um, you know, that, that, that's just a beautiful, beautiful thing and, and very possible. Um, very possible. To achieve. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. Let's see, 13 minutes. Wow, this is, this is a long one, it turns out. I didn't realize. Uh, I have so much more to say about this topic. I only really just kind of scratched a little bit, but I hope this gives you some food for thought as you think about the quality of your Saturn, the quality of your sun. Say, for example, the quality of your fifth house, your seventh house, maybe your first house you're looking at, maybe your 11th house you're looking at. There's quite a few things here. Um, for contemplation. So I hope this has been really interesting and please leave your comments below. I'm really, really enjoying your comments. I'm enjoying all of our interactions so much. The other thing I wanted to say <clears throat> is that Bad Rap Part 3 is coming. I just thought I would create and record this one because the uh, ideas were queuing up in my head um, and as always when that starts to happen I just have to get it out to you guys. So um, Stay tuned, I am working on the Bad Rap Part 3. I think that video, I'll touch on combustion, I don't anticipate it being a long one. And I think I'm largely gonna be just wrapping up the series. So that's been a really fun one to do. But I wanted to thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for being part of this channel. And I look forward to seeing you next time.